Welcome. Today, I want to talk about one of the biggest issues and challenges when wanting to pursue being an artist. And I'm going to share what we can do to choose a creative direction, choose the creative direction that is going to bring us the most excitement, fulfillment, nourishment, the feeling of being alive, and just that knowledge that we are on the right track and doing what we're supposed to do. Getting inspired is easy. It happens to all of us. Getting excited about something, that's easy. Feeling ambitious and pumped up, that is easy. That happens to all of us. It comes and goes. But actually working on something that we care deeply about and we want the outcome to turn out fabulous, that is horrifying. It's intimidating to take the steps towards anything that we really care about. And we can try to practice working on not caring about the outcome. And I talked about that last week. But when a pursuit is important to us, we simply want it to go well. We care. And the problem we all know about is that wanting it to go well, wanting something to go well, is exactly the thing that can prevent it from happening at all. So we can try to remember that what we're making, what we're creating, never, no one else has to ever see it, and we can always scrap it, and we can always start over, but we're terrified anyway. You know, all we see is other people's finished things, and we're just concerned that ours isn't going to be good enough, and we don't want to show it to people, and so maybe we shouldn't even work on it in the first place, and all of that stuff that's happening to all of us all the time. And the more important something is to us, the more we care. And the more we care, the more petrified we are to actually work on it. And the more petrified we are to actually work on it, the more likely it is that we don't do anything at all. And the more we don't do anything at all, the more life is just a boring and anxious string of wanting to do things and thinking we're going to do things and planning on doing things and never doing anything, especially never doing anything that really makes you feel alive. Of course, it's safer to dream about this stuff than it is to maybe have that dream be shattered by trying to do it and it not working out. But this fear is not a problem that needs fixing, this fear of doing the things that we care about because we want them to go well. We can learn to leverage this in a way that is incredibly beneficial and powerful. If we recognize this deep trepidation that comes up sometimes as just being an indicator of what we care about, then we can use it as a guide. When this fear bubbles up from deep down, it's actually delivering us a direct message from the core of our truest, deepest dreams and desires. And it's saying, that message reads, this is what you care about. This is what you must do. This is the thing that's gonna make you feel the best, the most alive, the most excited. This is gonna be the challenge that feels amazing to try. So our dread is a built-in compass. It's telling us what our creative priorities are. And it's pointing us in the direction and saying, this over here, this thing is going to give you the richest sense of satisfaction. This compass is always working. It's always on. We just have to choose to follow it or not. We just have to remember to follow it or not. If you've ever felt the exhausting trip down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what direction to go creatively. Oh, but maybe I want to do this, but maybe I want to do this, but maybe I want to do this. Oh, I don't know, but this is awesome. And oh, this person's doing that. Maybe I should do what they're doing. You could, you could tell how beneficial this could be, how much of an asset this is to have something that just kind of, okay, tune into it. And there you are. That's the thing. You know, the, it, it wipes away all of that I'm doing it because I see it's working for someone else, or I'm doing it because I'm good at it, but that doesn't mean I'm feeling it as deeply as, well, this other thing. That kind of scares me more because it's more exciting. To find out what's most important to you and what you should be doing, just ask, what am I most afraid of? That's the project you should be working on. And this fear won't ever go away, and we wouldn't want it to because it's telling us what's going to excite us. So it doesn't go away, but we have to face it. We have to go towards it. We have to, we have to engage with it. And just remember, if you're scared, you're on the right track. And this is not a new novel concept at all. Of course, you've heard this a million times. We need to hear it all the time as much as possible. I need to remind myself as much as possible. That's why I'm sharing it with you. And so we can all 
be a little more courageous in going towards those things that we really do want to be doing. Stephen Pressfield, the author of The War of Art, says, the more scared we are of a work or calling, the more sure we can be that we have to do it. The author Neil Gaiman says, whatever it is you're scared of doing, do it. And Eleanor Roosevelt, a famous quote of hers says, you gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. So in this case, in the world of creativity, art, where we're trying to professionally be vulnerable in a sense, fear is our friend and not our enemy. So let it happen. Let yourself be scared. Soak it up. Sit with it. Feel it. Notice it. Listen to it and go towards it. And you're on the right track. So that's all I wanted to share today. But I want to say one last thing, and that's that I am scared to be doing this right now. What I'm doing now, which is that I switched directions, at least over these last couple videos, I switched directions from doing guitar lessons to this creativity, artistic work and mentality stuff. And the reason for that is that I was doing some reflecting and using these processes that I'm talking about here today and noticing that, well, guitar lessons were rather comfortable for me. And I've been doing it for a long time and it's great and it's fun to share information with people when it's useful for them. But the reason that I play music and the reason that I might practice a scale or a technique or you know some kind of music theory concept is 100% for the sake of it being an option on my palette for actual creative work, for actually being creative, for actually pursuing being a musical artist or any kind of artist. Uh, and for me, my deepest love in music and creativity is songwriting. And I was feeling something was missing for me. And this is an absolute passion of mine to talk about mindset, creative recovery, I call it sometimes, uh, and artistic pursuits, artistic awakening, uh, overcoming our issues that are blocking us, just our own limiting beliefs that are blocking us from going towards the creative stuff and the artistic stuff. And I think most people, I think everybody is, has this ability to be an artist on the inside. And a lot of people are feeling that desire and they know how amazing it can feel, but we get very, 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 very blocked along the way. So this is stuff that I love to talk about and think about. And it's what I think about all the time. And so it's scary for me to switch directions and say, ah, you know, I'm going to put up these, this content that is about something totally different. And I'm not saying it's all I'm going to do now, but I'm testing it out and trying it out and trying to live these principles that I think are powerful and important and the ones that I'm sharing with you today. So that's it for this video. And I'll see you in another one next week. Thanks.